Welcome to F9 Financial Management. In this section I will go over capital structure theories and practical considerations. In this video we are going to look at the traditional theory of capital structure. We are then going to look at Mogliani and Miller's theory of capital structure. And finally we will look at the pecking order theory. The traditional theory of capital structure. What is the ideal capital structure? What is the ideal balance between debt and equity financing? As I've said in earlier videos, a little bit of debt is believed to be good for the WAC, as it will lower the cost of finance. This is the traditional view of capital structure, which is represented in this graph. The cost of finance is lowest when there is some debt. But look, once a certain gearing level is reached, the cost of capital dramatically increases. As we discussed in video sources of finance and their relative costs, the gearing that debt finance introduces to the capital structure can cause many issues that cause the WAC to increase. Once debt goes over a certain level, the cost of equity and debt increases. The traditional view is realistic. But what is the problem with this theory? The main issue with the traditional theory is that apart from trial and error, we don't know what level of gearing will reach the optimal level. We don't know how much gearing will affect the cost of equity and debt, and by how much. We can only just try and get this balance right. Magliani and Miller's theory of capital structure. Their theory argues that investors are rational, and their required rate of return of equity is directly proportional to the increase in gearing. So there is a linear relationship between the cost of equity and the gearing. So the increase in the cost of equity offsets the benefits of cheaper debt finance. So the WAC is unchanged. Let's look at the graph to demonstrate their theory. As you can see, the WAC lies between the cost of debt and equity on the graph. It is constant. As any increase in the gearing will increase the cost of equity, it is offset by the cheaper debt financing. So the WAC remains the same. There are a few key assumptions that Magliani and Miller's theory makes. Firstly, that there is no corporation tax. Secondly, that it operates in perfect capital markets where all investors have the same information and they react rationally to it. And finally, that there are no transaction costs and that debt is risk free. Now, seeing the assumptions that underpin this theory, you can imagine that there were many criticisms, particularly that it assumed no tax. When looking at capital structure, tax is very important. Why? Because the interest payable on debt is tax deductible, so impacts on the cost of debt. So the model was revised to include tax. This model still assumed perfect market conditions and that investors were rational and the required rate of return of equity is directly proportional to the increase in gearing. The adjustments were that since debt interest is tax deductible, the cost of debt is less than the original theory. This reduced debt cost means that returns are more predictable. Since returns are more predictable, the costs of equity, in other words, the investor's expected return, do not go up as much as the initial theory did without corporation tax, as it did when gearing went up. This is because debt is 
not seen to introduce as much risk to investors as the initial theory. Since the increase in the cost of equity does not completely offset the benefits of cheaper debt, the WAC falls as gearing increases. And that is, in a, in a nutshell, what it is. The WAC falls as gearing increases because the introduction of corporation tax makes the debt financing, it reduces the risk that the debt financing is seen to introduce. So what does this mean? <laughs> the revised theory indicates that the WAC reduces with gearing and that the company should use as much debt finance as possible to increase the market value of the company. This is very different from what you might have learned so far and there are a few strong arguments against adopting Magliani and Miller's theory. The first one is that increased gearing increases bankruptcy risk if shareholders become concerned about bankruptcy, they will sh sell their shares in the company. The share price will drop and the WAC will increase. Debt financing, as you learned in earlier videos, can place restrictive conditions on companies and limit the activities of management. Charges can be placed on assets restricting management's activities. Other restrictions that debt financiers can place on an organisation is restrict the levels of dividends that can be paid to shareholders. They can also limit the level of debt that the company can take on. So the level of debt a company can take on has a limit, one that is imposed by the debt financiers. Tax exhaustion. This means that after a certain level of gearing, the interest charges cannot be offset against tax. This increases the cost of debt. Modigliani and Miller's theory assumes perfect capital markets to operate. In the real world, our markets are not perfect, and these market imperfections are another argument against their theory. Specifically, it assumes that in a perfect market, there are no concerns about bankruptcy. And by now, you are very aware that this is something investors do worry about and will want higher returns to compensate for this risk. Now, let's look at the pecking order theory. This theory states that organisations have a preferred hierarchy for financing. They will firstly use internally generated funds like retained earnings. These funds are available and there are no transaction costs such as administration fees associated with them. Then the company will look to use debt financing. There are a lot of benefits of debt financing. As we've said, it is cheap. It can reduce the whack. If it is secured by an asset, it is even cheaper and there is far less work that goes into raising debt finance than equity finance. And debt financing is suitable for shorter term projects because it can be paid back and there is no control sacrificed. The last option a company will look at is raising equity finance. Raising finance in this way, for example, through a share issue is very time consuming. There is an awful lot of administration fees and administration work to be done. And it would need to be for a permanent investment as the company is diluting control uh, by raising this finance. They will also have to consistently invest resources in maintaining shareholders relations. So how would this theory impact on investment? This theory means that the value of a project would depend on how it is being financed. It also means that some projects will only be undertaken if they can be funded internally or with risk-free finance. And the pecking order theory means that companies with less cash and higher gearing will be more prone to underinvest. <laughs>